is the 4th Gen Outback 3.6R, the Unicorn Subaru. Stay tuned to find out. Can you take your crossover through this severely difficult trail in the Calico Mountains? Of course you can, so keep watching so you don't end up on this trail. What's the better off-road mode for your IBTM4 equipped Honda? Mud or sand? And can I really fit through this arch without hitting? Whoopsie. So go ahead and tag along. This is your passport to the Calico Mountains. Located 130 miles northeast of Los Angeles, the Calico Mountains offers a wide range of activities. I would say the three most popular things to do would be off-roading, abandoned mine exploration, and playing with kitty cats. The Calico Mountains is a fairly large area. It's 64,000 acres. The off-road trails here vary from easy to extreme. We're talking Jeep level 10. Because you won't have cell phone reception, I highly recommend that you use some kind of offline GPS app like Gaia GPS. I made a video about beginner tips for Gaia GPS. I think you'll find it very useful. So check out the video here. There's a lot of big boy terrain out in the Calico Mountains, but there are some places that a crossover could traverse. The Odessa Canyon is a good place to start. There's two arches that many vehicles could drive through. This is an easy but fun obstacle. Do not confuse these with Kramer's Arch, which is a bit more difficult. Just beware if your vehicle is kind of large, especially with a rooftop tent, you won't be able to make it through that second arch. Smaller vehicles will be just fine. Ooh, that's one tight fit. After you visit these two arches, you'll probably want to turn around. Because if you keep going, you're going to run into Doran Scenic Drive. And this trail is rated as extreme. I would recommend hopping on Mule Canyon Road. From here, you could hit up Kramer's Arch, or you could drive all the way around over to Tin Can Alley and make your way over to the main Calico Mines, which uh, offer really awesome subterranean mining shafts. First, let's go check out Kramer's Arch. The road here is moderately difficult for a crossover. A stock all-wheel drive vehicle may require skilled driving. By the way, Ray's Outback is not stock. It's two inch lifted with a custom front bumper. Yee! Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go. So here it is, Kramer's Arch. This will be a tough test for any all-wheel drive vehicle. FYI, this obstacle isn't exactly easy for a dedicated off-roader. YouTube channel Dirt Nation sent their Toyota Tacoma Tierty off-road and there were some slipped wheels. I'm not sure if his rear locker was activated. Back about a year ago, we had a few vehicles attempt this obstacle. We had two Subarus with constantly variable transmissions and an older Subaru that didn't have the VDC system. There's a Subaru out there that I think combines really good attributes. It has a 3.6 liter six cylinder, a five speed automatic transmission, a traction control system, and the VTD all wheel drive system. This is the fourth generation Subaru Outback 3.6R. It ran from 2010 to 2014. Is this a unicorn Subaru? Keep watching to find out. Before we watch Ray Stafari's attempt, let's go back one year ago and see how these other Subarus did. 
This was all part of a video that I released a year ago. At 48 minutes long, I can imagine many of you did not see it. So this vehicle here is a Subaru Forester XT. It's uh, a model that ran from 2014 to 2018. This vehicle does have a CVT transmission, and um, one attribute of this transmission is they're highly fuel efficient, but they will stall quicker than a traditional automatic transmission. Oh. You'll see here that crawling up steep obstacles isn't its forte. By the way, don't feel too bad for my friend Dak Lack Photo. He drives something a bit more capable now. <laughs> this modern Subaru features a VDC system. It's a brake-based traction control system that's found in a lot of vehicles nowadays. And in the field, I observed that traction control systems are more effective than these older, viscous, limited slip differentials. This isn't just about Subaru. At the turn of the century, Toyota replaced their LSDs with a track This is their traction control system found in their trucks. Yeah. Here's the first generation Subaru in present. This vehicle has the right transmission, but these earlier models did not have a there traction control nice. system. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. YouTube channel Brucey did an excellent job at comparing these two systems, traction control versus a VLSD. Oh no, I, I heard these are really good. Just keep it going. I heard they're really good off-road. Oh, look how good that is. <laughs> So now it's time to see Ray Stafari's fourth generation Outback 3.6R with a five speed automatic transmission and traction control or VDC. Now, if you notice that wheel slip at the beginning, that's because his tires are at 33 PSI. He did not air down. And this would make it even more impressive if he makes it up this obstacle. You're on the rock, okay? All right. It's gonna be a little. There's a big ledge right there. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. L little more. Little more. Right there. That would be it. Yeah. You gotta go, driver. Almost. Okay, um, great, let's choose another line. I got another line choice for you. You're gonna come in this way. Yeah. Let's drive up this. Okay. Okay, uh, little passenger. Okay, yeah, there, there there's your line. You could probably bump it a little bit, so just back up just a tad bit. Wait, one second, one second. Here is on something. So back up just about, like, I would say, six inches. But don't move, just go straight. You, you have the perfect line right now. What Ray will be doing here is he's going to load up on his torque converter and then release the brake and hit the gas. Wait, one second. <laughs> yeah, that should be enough for a bump. Hell yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Good job! Yeah, you're three wheeling it right now. I knew you could do it, man. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Good 
Congratulations to Ray and his unicorn outback. So back a year ago, after three vehicles before me tried to complete Kramer's Arch, I went straight to the obstacle at low speed and crawled up. I had sand mode engaged from the start. This was before my lift kit and before I started preferring using mud mode when I go off-roading. So according to Jalopnik, the difference between sand and mud mode is a more aggressive throttle input and sad mode becomes more rear-wheel drive biased. You're about to see that there has to be a lot more to it. Without a doubt, the throttle input on mud mode lets you smoothly drive over rough terrain. The sad mode seems to be almost digital. It's either gas on or gas off. In both mud and sand mode, the rear twin clutch differential simulates a rear locker. Mud mode has torque split 40 front, 60 rear, and sand mode has the torque going, split keep going, keep 30 going, front, go, 70 ready. rear. Go driver, go driver. Go driver, driver. 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 Yeah! That wasn't exactly pretty, but I got up fairly easy, right? That was my first try. Now let's go see another attempt. Now, my Honda Passport is lifted two inches, and I disconnected my rear sway bars to improve my flex. My tires are aired down to 20 PSI. I got a lot going on for my Passport this time around. Actually, the difference is that I'm approaching in mud mode. this doesn't seem to be going as smoothly as my first attempt. Maybe this obstacle has become more eroded. I'm not sure. Maybe it's the mode I'm in. I wasn't expecting sad mode to make that much of a difference. I think everyone was surprised that the passport just kind of flew up. It's all good. Trail damage is a reality. The definition of adventure is to take a risk. Thankfully, the damage wasn't that bad at all. For regular dirt roads, fire roads, just use normal mode. For chunkier terrain and light rock crawling situations, you should never really heavy, heavily rock crawl in a Honda Passport. Uh, you should use mud mode because you're able to modulate the throttle safer. And for those times when you need to send it, sand mode is there. Sand mode equals send mode. Anyways, let's continue on this adventure, shall we? Just behind Kramer's Arch, there's a trail that will lead you to Mule Canyon Road. Actually, there's a trail that might look a little rough, but there's a shortcut to the Calico Mines.
Without Gaia Maps, it would be really difficult to navigate. Our goal was to make our way over to the Calico Mines. I've been here once before, but I wasn't totally sure how to get there. Okay. Oh, there's like the Toyotas up there. Came from over there. And if you look around here, all right, so the hole that is closest to these roads. This is where you go to do this hike. All right, gentlemen. They changed the ladder. Um, someone took the big ladder out. Unless I'm just the wrong uh, mine, but it looks like the same one from what I remember. A, a better ladder. Yeah. We are underground. Look how long the hallway is. <laughs> okay, this is where you gotta be careful. That's a abysmal, man. Look at that. Oh, Freaking abysmal. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Looks like it gets a little tight right here. Oh, this is where we go. This is what I was talking about. The video game part. Alright. <laughs> Alright, go, go for ahead. it. Go for it, guys. <laughs> Who came up with this? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, this one. I wish I had my like stretch your pants. <laughs> go. Watch, uh, watch your head. Take my advice. <sighs> Be careful here. Gotta hug the right. Whoa. What the? There's light down there, guys. Light? Yeah. Natural light coming out of there from below. In case you're wondering what happened at Race Safari, well, I made two trips out to the Calico Mountains. This is one of the very few places that you could legally off road during this time. like the camp I want to go to is going to be to my left. I'm not sure where going to the right takes us. I'm sorry, what was it? So that will do it for this episode. I hope you learned a lot about the Calico Mountains. It's a wonderful place to visit. Lots of things to do. There's rough terrain, there's easy terrain, there's something for everybody. Especially if you like cats. So until next time, have fun on your adventures.